the arc light. Traditional diagnostic instruments such as direct ophthalmoscopes or otoscopes are expensive, complex, heavy and are not widely available in developing countries. In recent years, several simpler, easy-to-use pocket size models have been developed. The Arclight is an ultra-low-cost instrument which works as an ophthalmoscope, magnifying loop and otoscope. The loop is a magnifying lens which is used to get a close-up view of the front of the eye. It can be used with daylight white light or bluish light. The white light is used for a general view of the lids and lashes, conjunctiva, cornea and anterior chamber. The blue light is ideal to look for corneal damage or ulcers after staining the eye with fluorescein. The ophthalmoscope has a sight hole, corrective lenses for refractive errors and a switch to change between low or high light settings. It is used in the same way as the traditional ophthalmoscope. First, look at the red reflex. To start, select the zero no lens setting. Hold the arc light at arm's length from the eye. From this distance, look at the red reflex in both eyes. This will allow you to compare the two sides. Next, select the plus four lens and hold about a hand span distance from the eye. This will give a magnified view of the red reflex and will show in more detail any cataracts or other opacities. It may also show small abnormalities such as keratic precipitates, which are small deposits on the back surface of the cornea. If you are examining the patient's right eye, hold in your right hand and look with your right eye. If you are examining the left eye, use your left hand and left eye. Once you have assessed the red reflex, look at the optic disc and retina. To do this, select the zero no lens setting and ask the patient to look straight ahead and not into the light. Move closer to the eye. As with all ophthalmoscopes, you will get a far better view if you dim the lighting in the room, dilate the pupil and come very close to the patient. The white light is used to look at the optic disc and the surrounding retina. If the patient has a very small pupil or if they are light sensitive, the low beam setting should be used. Otherwise, the high beam will usually give a better view. If you cannot see the retina clearly, this may be because of a refractive error. Use the corrective lenses to get a better view. Try the minus lenses for short-sighted or myopic patients or try the plus lens for long-sighted or hyperopic patients. If you or the patient wear glasses or contact lenses, the best image may result from keeping them on for the examination. If the pupils are small or the view is hazy, actively move your head and the arc light up, down, in and out as needed to get the best view. Once you can see the retina, find one of the retinal blood vessels. Again, you may need to alter the focus with the corrective lenses until the blood vessel is clearly in focus. Retinal blood vessels branch out from the optic disc. Follow the blood vessel back until you reach the disc. Once you have examined the optic disc, move the ophthalmoscope to look at the rest of the retina. If you have dilated the pupil, you should be able to get a view of the macula by asking the patient to look at the light. You can get a better view of the retinal blood vessels and any hemorrhages or tiny new vessels by selecting the green filter. Remember,
match the eyes. Use your right eye to view the patient's right eye and left for left. Get close to the patient's eye and make sure that your eye is close to the sight hole. Examine the patient with the room lights as low as practically possible. Make sure the patient looks straight ahead and not into the light. Dilate the pupils if it is safe to do so, as this will give you a far better view of the lens and fundus. The arc light has a handy ruler to allow easy measurement of abnormalities. There is also a gauge to estimate pupil size, a near vision chart, a line target for measuring the near point of convergence, white and red targets for testing the visual field and the optic nerve function, a colour strip to allow basic testing for colour defects, and a scale to help assess the cup disc ratio. For health workers who also have to examine the ears, the arc light can be used in a similar way to a traditional otoscope. The arc light is supplied with two push fit attachments called speculums. The large speculum is used for bigger children and adults, and the small speculum for infants. These fit over the magnifying loop. Tilt the patient's head to the side. To straighten the ear canal, pull the pinna backwards and upwards. In young children, pull the pinna straight backwards. Gently insert the speculum along the canal, pointing the speculum towards the angle of the jaw on the opposite side. Hold the arc light like a pencil. To reduce sudden movements, parents should cradle their child's head. In the ear canal, you may see wax or foreign bodies. The wall of the canal may be inflamed or infected. Move the speculum gently along the canal, just past the canal hairs, until the tympanic membrane comes into view. Look at the pars tensor and pars flaccida and note any signs of infection, perforations or other defects. Hold the device in the right hand to examine the right ear and left hand for left ear. Examine the good ear first to avoid infection spread. The arc light can also be used to examine the throat with a tongue depressor and can also be used as a magnifier to examine the skin. With the blue light, certain skin infections that fluoresce under the blue light will show up more clearly. The arc light has a built-in solar panel so that it can be easily charged in places with no ready electricity supply. It can also be easily and quickly charged in about 20 minutes from a computer using its USB socket.